Hi guys. Today I'm going to show you how to make homemade fettuccine. Now the beauty of homemade fettuccine is it's very easy to make and it doesn't take a lot of ingredients. However, there is one proviso. You need to have a fettuccine maker. I happen to have one that attaches directly to my KitchenAid mixer, which by the way we'll also be able to use to make the pasta as well. But if you don't have one of these handy dandy little items, all you have to do is go to any flea market and you can buy one usually for about 10 bucks. And let me tell you something, if you've never had homemade fettuccine, it's food of the gods. It really is phenomenal, and like I said, it's as simple as pie to make. So, let me show you what it takes. All you're going to need is two and a half cups of flour, and if you have semolina flour, you can use a half a cup of semolina and two cups of white flour. You're going to need three eggs, you're going to need a tablespoon of olive oil, and you're going to need a little bit of salt. That's all there is to it. Let me show you how to put it together. So to start with, we're going to pour our flour into the mixer. Now, if you don't have one of these stand mixers, you can always use a Cuisinart. You know, any food processor will do this just as well. Just the way I make my pizza dough a lot of times is to put the ingredients into that as well. Because once you get that in there, then all you have to do is you take your eggs. I'm going to crack them right into the same bowl. Okay, and then I'll show you how to do this. All right, so let's crank this bad boy up, and we're going to start. I'm just going to take our three eggs, and we're going to start putting them in now, a little bit at a time, okay? Then we're going to add in our salt. About a half a teaspoon of salt should do you. You can hear the mixture is laboring a bit, which is good. That means it's making pasta. And then, I'm going to give it a shot of olive oil. One more tablespoon. Eventually what you'll get is this. I know it looks like a mess, but it really isn't. There we have it. So the next thing you're going to do is put a little flour on your hands, a little flour in the bowl. Just get in there and mix it. And by the way, if the mixture is really dry or the humidity is really low, you may need to add a fourth egg. But when you're done, what you can end up with is this basically a ball of pasta. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take it on the counter, or in my case, I have my, my boards. Okay. Because here's the other part. Once you get it done, you got a real sticky mess here, right? Well, it's supposed to be like that because what you're going to do is you're going to knead it for a little bit because that helps get, make it elastic. It helps also get all of the flour to the right consistency. And last but not least, of course, it helps to keep it from sticking to the bowl because when we're done, we're going to put it into a bowl and we're going to let it sit for one hour. And then at the end of an hour, that's when we're going to take our roller and our cutter and I'll show you how to turn this into a fabulous, fabulous pasta. After we needed it for a couple of minutes, it should be now nice and elastic, but you know, it'll give, but it's not sticky to the touch. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a bowl, we're going to put just maybe a half, like a teaspoon of oil in the bottom of the bowl and then we're just going to roll this puppy around in it as you can see just to coat it and then we cover this up and set our timer for one hour all right an hour's passed we want to take this bad boy out of here as you can see it's now a little tacky so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little flour on it in the board okay and we know again we're not trying to put a ton of it in there, but we just want to get it to the right consistency. So I just need it a little bit more and see how nice and elastic it is. That's what you want. That's what good pasta starts off as. Okay, and then once that's done, I'm going to have my lovely assistant hand me a couple of things that I'm going to need. Thank you. And thank you. All right. 
because what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to cut it into four pieces, like so. And when you're making pasta, because you have to get it down to the right size, you're going to be working first with the roller, then with the cutter, and we'll do this on each section, and I'll show you exactly how to do that next. So start off with, again, a little, little flour, just to kind of keep it from sticking. I also put a little bit on the roller. Okay, and then we're going to roll this out, and I can move this out of the harm's way there. Because ideally what you want is you want a long, thin strip, because that's what we're going to make the machine do next. All right. so then we take this, we turn it all the way till it's the largest size you can get, and we start from there. Just like making taffy. It's a pasta taffy pull. Pretty impressive, huh? But guess what? We're not done. So now all I normally do is cut it in half. We're going to roll it thinner still. There we have it. There we have it. Now I'm going to switch over to the cutter. And this is actually going to make the noodle. And you only have to run this through it once. You'll see. I always like to start from the square side. Voila. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take these bad boys and we're going to go drape it in our kitchen over our cupboard doors because we're going to let these dry for one hour. And then we're just going to repeat the process until all this is turned into these. You'll see. Okay, well we got rid of all the pasta and what you're going to do is you're going to let it sit on the door for one hour to dry up a little bit and then we're going to take it and we're going to make coils here. I'll show you how to do that next but before we do that I just wanted to take a look at this because when you're done you're going to end up with a lot of little bits and pieces you know and some people throw those away and I'm thinking well they're crazy because this is also good pasta. I save all these little noodles and what I do is I use these like I put these in a little bag for soup. Because once these dry up a little bit and you put them in a bag, you can break them up and you can use them for noodles and noodle soup very handily. And also when you're handling some of your other pasta down the road, you're going to end up breaking some of it up. So before you know it, you've got enough noodles for a pot of soup. So never waste anything on man cave munchies. See you back in an hour. Okay, so an hour's gone by and now you're going to ask me one question. What happens if you have it too long or too short? Well, too short is easy. Just take these and you put them in your bag so you can use them for soup noodles at a later date. Try to get off all the flour that you can. And the two long ones, if you'll remember when you when we did the, whenever you run through the roller, they're going to come out at a different length. Well, you don't want to cut them when they're wet because they tend to stick together. But now that they're dry, you can cut them down to size and you can coil them up. When we get them all coiled up and we let them dry for probably another 30 minutes, we'll be able to put them in a bag and stick them in the freezer.
just like a mama used to make, right? It's so easy to make this, you'll want to do this at least every month because you get a couple of pounds of pasta plus some nice noodles for your soup. All you have to do to cook it, it's even easier. You just get a pot of water boiling and it's not like when you got the box stuff where you got to boil it for 15 minutes or so. Literally, this will hit the pan and within 60 seconds you'll have perfectly cooked fettuccine. Next up, I'm going to show you how to make a rum cocktail called rum chata. I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way. So stay tuned and thanks for watching Man Cave Munchies. See you soon.